So, in our last class, we were looking into uh, the shift reducing parsing policies and we have seen that there are four actions that uh, can occur with shift reduce parsing, shift, reduce, accept and error. So, these were the uh, four uh, oper operations that a shift reduce parser will do. Now, many a time we will see that it may happen that there will be conflict in because uh, the uh, as per depending upon the grammar, the parser may not be able to decide uniquely whether to do a shift operation or a reduce operation. So, that is known as a shift reduce conflict. So, this is uh, that shift reduce conflict. So, parser cannot decide whether to shift or to reduce and there is another conflict which is known as reduce reduce conflict where we can uh, uh, there are more than one rule by which uh, we may try uh, we may um, uh, do the reduction. Of course, uh, uh, in, uh, in future what can happen is that as you see more tokens, so maybe uh, one of these uh, reductions are valid. So, as a result uh, if you do, do not do enough look ahead, so there will, there will be conflicts and those conflicts cannot be resolved at, uh, at the first level itself. So, that type of situation will give us reduce reduce conflict. So, if we want to uh, modify uh, the grammar for uh, re uh, for removing this conflicts that is better. If not, then we have to take uh, some default action and the default action for shift reduce uh, conflict is doing a shift and for a reduce reduce conflict the default action is whichever reduction rule comes first in the set of production rules. So, that will be taken as the rule by which to do the reduction. So, there cannot be any shift shift conflict because uh, in both the cases we are going to shift the next input symbol. So, there is no problem with that. So, now there is nothing like shift shift conflict and uh, shift accept or reduce accept. So, this sort of conflicts also cannot occur because they are we are already in the accept state. So, there is no further action to be taken. Now, let us take some example and try to see how this uh, shift reduce uh, conflicts uh, can occur. Like in this case, so what we have is uh, say this particular grammar, the if then else grammar. So, statement producing if, uh, producing if expression then statement or if expression then statement else statement or other statements. Now, say, say at, at some point of time the situation may be like this that in the stack we already have these tokens if expression then statement. So, up to this much we have seen. So, uh, in this expression and statement, so these are non-terminals and if and then they are terminal. So, as we have as we know that the stack can contain uh, all grammar symbols both terminals and non-terminals. So, suppose at some point of time this is the situation where statement is at the top of the stack and then the next input that we have is the else next token that we have is else. Now, what to do? So, uh, one possibility is that we uh, so the, this else is a part of this uh, if then statement. So, this else has to be shifted into the stack. Other possibility is, so it uh, so there was a nested if, so there the situation is like this, so there was a, uh, there is a nested if, so I have got some if expression then S1 else S2. So, this is one possibility, other possibility is that if E then say if E1 then S1 if uh, e 2 then s 2 else s 3. So, this is the situation on which there will be a shift reduce conflict because uh, when we see this particular else now what to do. So, whether it should be uh, shifted because whether it is giving to it is going to give me this if then else statement or uh, so um, I will reduce up to this. I will reduce up to this and this else becomes a part of this outer if. Outer if. So, it does, so, that is the conflict. Okay. So, so, in that case uh, the parser will not be able to take a unique decision whether to do a shift or a reduce. And as I said the default action is to do shift. So, if you shift it then what happens is that this else S3, so this becomes a part of the innermost if. So, uh, most of the programming languages they also tell that way that the else is always associated with the innermost if and in that case shift is a valid action. So, that is um, uh, the that is one example of shift reduce conflict. Next we will be looking into the reduce reduce conflict. So, like this suppose I have got a grammar that uh, has got uh, both uh, that has got uh, both. So, this is a procedure call. So, this is a procedure call 
and then uh, this may be uh, some uh, array list, this may be an array. So, if there is a procedure called so say proc 1, there I can pass these parameters say x, y and z, maybe it has got 3 parameters. Now, there may be another array a, a, a r and there also I have got the uh, I have got the uh, arguments or the ind array indices they are also expressions. So, that is also say x, y and z some expression. Now, uh, in uh, so this x, y, z as far as tokens are concerned. So, all of them will be taken as i d. So, in one case you have got this uh, this situation that i d followed by um, i d followed by i d i d followed by this parameter list where this parameter list is again uh, an expression. Uh, so, this is parameter list giving parameter and the parameter is ultimately giving i d. So, ulti ultimately it is giving i d comma i d like that. And other situation is that we have got uh, this array and that after that array also we have got this array name is coming as id and then we have got this uh, expression list which is the um, array indices. Uh, so, this array indices so they also come as id. Now, if you are, are at, a, at a situation like this, so we have seen id within bracket id and the next symbol is a next token is a comma. Now, what to do? So, there can be one possible reduction like this by this one parameter uh, giving id and there is another reduction expression giving id. So, which one to do we, re we really do not know. So, until and unless we know that very recently we have seen a procedure call then in that case this reduction should be by this and uh, if you on the other hand if you assume that very recently we have seen one array call uh, uh, array, uh, uh, array name as the portion before the open parenthesis, then we know that this is going to be an expression list. So, we should do go by expression producing id. So, there is a confusion. So, just by looking into this top of the stack and this comma, you cannot take a decision by which rule to do the reduction. So, this gives rise to reduce reduce conflict. So, uh, this the conflicts are to be avoided because if a grammar has got uh, this type of conflicts, then uh, in the parsing process, then uh, the parser will not be able to proceed uh, properly and there will be difficulty in uh, parsing the input sequence. So, default rules are there, but it is not mandatory that default rules will always be applicable. So, depending upon the language, so they may not be applicable also. So, we have to be very careful uh, about these conflicts. So, one of the basic responsibilities for this uh, parser designer is to modify the grammar so that uh, these conflicts can be resolved. So, we will be looking into two types of bottom up parsing strategies, one is known as operator precedence parsing and another is a class of parsers known as LR parsers. Out of these two operator precedence parsing this is very simple. So, for a particularly for um, uh, language that just accept expressions. So, basically the expressions uh, expression grammar. So, they can be uh, parsed using this operator precedence parsing. So, we will see there are certain rules that will uh, define what is an operator grammar and all. And in general uh, other parsing methods. So, we have got this LR parsing and this LR parsing we will see that it can further be divided into uh, number of uh, uh, categories we will look into something called SLR or simple LR parsing, then we will look into something called canonical LR, canonical LR, so which is more generic in nature. So, SLR is pretty simple out of uh, these three alternatives that we have in LR parsing, SLR is going to be pretty simple and many a time so we can, uh, we can construct the parser by hand. On the other hand this canonical LR, so it is difficult to construct by hand and uh, it has got a large number of states compared to an SLR parser. So, it has got large number of states. On the other hand this LALR there is another parser known as LALR which is uh, full form is look ahead LR. So, this uh, this this parser so this is uh, this will have less number of states. In fact, the number of states that LALR parser will have is same as the number of states that you have in SLR, but it can uh, it can be more powerful than the SLR. So, that way it is better. So, most of the automated tools that we have that we have talked about previously like Yak, Bison, etcetera. So, they uh, generate LALR parser for a grammar. However, LALR is difficult to learn 
uh, for our class. So, we will be uh, we will be first learning SLR and then go towards the other categories. So, let us start with uh, this uh, operator precedence parsing. So, operator precedence parsing is applicable for operator grammars. So, a grammar will be said uh, will be said to be an operator grammar if it does not have any epsilon transition and in no production rule right hand side you will have two adjacent non terminals like say this particular grammar. So, E producing E of E. So, you see this operator. So, this is um, uh, is this operator we can we can we can so this grammar whether it is, uh, is it operator grammar so it is not an operator grammar because you see this e and op so they are two non terminal so they are appearing side by side so this is not a operator grammar so this is not operator grammar however we can modify this grammar a bit we can modify this grammar a bit and uh, we can write it like this. So, we if we substitute this op in the first rule, so you get a grammar like this and here you see we do not have this situation that is two adjacent non terminals. So, that condition never occurs. So, it is always uh, 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 separated by a terminal symbol. So, this is an operator grammar and also it does not have any epsilon transition. So, this is an operator grammar. So, this is uh, fine. So, we can uh, use this grammar for operator precedence parsing. So, once you so given a grammar you first check whether this is an operator grammar or not. If it is not an operator grammar we have to check by doing some simple modification to the grammar is it uh, possible to convert it into an operator grammar. So, if we can do that then we can uh, we try to frame the operator precedence uh, parsing table and follow the operator uh, the operator we can follow the operator precedence parsing. So, what do you mean by precedence of operators? So, from our mathematical mathematics classes we know that whenever we have got uh, perhaps, uh, some operator, so there are some precedence. For example, uh, addition and multiplication out of that in general multiplication has got the higher precedence than addition. So, in case of uh, grammar, so we, we will be talking about precedence between the terminal symbols. So, suppose A and B they are two terminal symbols if A has higher precedence over B, we will denote it like this. So, this is just a notation. So, uh, so we will read it as A, A has higher precedence than B. Another possibility is if A has lower precedence over B, so we will be writing as A less than then a dot then B and we will read it as A has lower precedence than B. And if A and B are of equal precedence, then we will be writing like this a with a dot a on the on, on top of an equality sign and then b. You see that uh, many a times for our uh, for the sake of simplicity we will simply write uh, simply say a greater than b or a less than b like that or a equal to b. But in general we will be uh, we will be uh, following uh, we will be meaning this thing that is a when I say a greater than b. So, I, I really mean that a is of higher precedence than b. So, so these are uh, certain, certain rules like I identifier has got higher precedence than any other symbol, dollar has the lowest precedence and if two operators have equal precedence then we check the associativity rule of that operator. So, this is in general for uh, expressions. So, this is true for expressions that uh, any identifier it will have higher precedence over any other symbol and the dollar will have the lowest precedence and we have to follow associativity to decide the precedence. So, if two operators are equal precedence like say a plus b plus c. So, a plus b plus c then this a b a b. So, this plus and this plus they are of equal precedence. So, we have to follow associativity rule in that case. So, anyway so uh, for uh, uh, grammars that involves only uh, arithmetic expressions, So, these rules are valid but in general how to decide uh, this precedence and all so that we will see as we proceed in the lecture. So, this is a precedence table. So, following the previous rule that we have, so we can say that this is a precedence rule. So, I, we said that id has identifier has got higher precedence than any other symbol. 
So, here is so identifier is having higher precedence than any other symbol. Then it says that in case of plus, so plus has got lower precedence than identifier and then this is uh, I have to follow associativity. So, if I have got a plus b plus c then we do a plus b first and then do plus c. So, plus has got the higher precedence over plus. Similarly, plus has lower precedence than star and uh, plus has got higher precedence than dollar. So, all the terminal symbols they have got higher precedence than dollar. Similarly, star it has got multiplication it has got lower precedence than identifier, higher precedence than plus, higher precedence than star and higher precedence than dollar. And dollar has got lower precedence than everybody excepting dollar. So, this is the precedence table. So, this particular table we have framed uh, by taking into consideration the arithmetic expression rules. Now, we will see later how to do it for a general grammar. So, suppose we have got an example uh, to be uh, parsed. So, id plus id star id. So, what we do? So, we put a dollar at the beginning and a dollar at the end and between any two terminals. So, we insert the corresponding uh, uh, precedence, val pre precedence value. So, if you consider this rule dollar and id. So, dollar is uh, uh, less than id. So, we have put less than then id and plus. So, id is uh, greater than plus. So, this is uh, greater than. So, that way we do it. Now, it is said that anything that comes within this less than and greater than. So, that is a handle. So, this is a handle. Similarly, if we have got this thing. Uh, so, uh, this part will be a handle. So, that way it can identify the handles in the language in, in the thing. So, so, basic principle for this uh, 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 parsing is like this. We scan the input string from left to right and we try to detect the greater than. So, this uh, string that we have, so we scan from left to right and try to see where first this greater than occurs. So, this is the first greater than. So, we, uh, we detect the uh, uh, greater than and, and put a pointer on its location. So, we keep a um, note that we have seen a greater than at this point. So, keep a note, uh, keep a pointer here and then now we have to scan backwards till we reach the previous less than. So, uh, this one is done. So, the we, we scan backwards to see what is the, uh, we scan backwards to see where this less than appears. And once we find it, the string between this less than and greater than is the handle. We replace this handle by the head of the uh, respective production. So, uh, this handle will be replaced by E now. Okay. So, this is uh, this, so because E producing ID was a rule. So, E producing ID was a rule. So, this uh, handle will be replaced by E now. So, and then we repeat this process until we reach the start symbol. So, this way the, the, uh, the parsing process will continue like this. So, this is the overall algorithm. So, initialize stack to dollar and uh, we uh, then we consider so at any point of time what we do is that we have got the stack. So, uh, say we look into the top of the stack and if this is the input stream. So, we look into the input symbol. So, we compare this top of the stack element with the first input symbol. So, here we have put a dollar. So, we compare dollar with the first input. If u be the topmost terminal in the stack, so this is the, so what is the topmost terminal in stack? So, that we find out and v is the next input symbol. So, there may be some, there may be some non-terminal symbols, but suppose this is the topmost terminal symbol that we have here. So, this, this is our u and this is the v. So, we compare between u and v. So, if u is of equal precedence than dollar, let us say if u is dollar or v is dollar, in that case we have successfully parsed the string. So, we will come out. If not, if, uh, if u is uh, less than v, u is of lower precedence than v or u is of equal precedence than uh, like v, then we will be shifting v into the stack. So, in that case v will be put into the stack and we will be advancing the input pointer to the next place. And if u is greater than v, precedence of u is more than the precedence of v, then we pop out the topmost symbol, okay. uh, then we uh, from the stack call it v from the stack until the top of the stack is less than v. So, whatever symbol we pop out, 
So, until that popped out symbol is having a less than relationship with uh, uh, top of the stack has got a less than relationship with uh, V. So, till that much we pop out. So, that will be popping out enough entries to uh, that is that will pop that will be popping out a uh, complete handle. Otherwise, uh, so if that also does not happen then there is an error. So, error condition occurs when we uh, some table entries are undefined like say here in this table. So, id id is undefined. So, and as we can in intuitively understand, so if there are two identifiers coming one after the other, so that is meaningless because in an expression between two identifiers some operator must be there. So, if the operator is not there that means there is some error, there is, there is some error. So, this entry is a is an error entry. So, we can have many such error entries. So, uh, if, if you find that there is no precedence relationship between u and v that means there is an error. So, let us see how this uh, operation uh, parsing process works. So, this is our input string. So, id plus id star id. So, this is the input string. So, we have put a dollar at the end. So, we have put a dollar into the stack and then the rule says that you compare dollar with id. And since uh, you compare dollar and id, so, so, so this is the uh, uh, parsing table. So, dollar is less than id. So, dollar less than id. So, in that case the action is to shift id. So, id has been shifted into the stack. Now, it is id plus. So, id plus. So, id is of higher precedence than plus. So, if, um, so it is i. So, it is of higher precedence than plus. So, in that case it will be popping out the entries from id from stack. So, id is popped out and the popped out uh, symbol id has got uh, at top of the stack is dollar and that popped out symbol is id. So, if you look into this uh, thing, so top of the stack should have a less than relationship with the element with the uh, uh, element popped out. Okay. So, that, that should be the case. So, uh, here you see when this id is popped out, so dollar will be on the top of the stack and dollar has got less than relationship with id. So, it stops. So, this id is just popped out. Now, between dollar plus, so dollar plus, so dollar is of lower precedence than plus, so plus will be shifted into the stack. Then we have got id, so plus id, so plus is of lower precedence than id, so id is pushed into the stack. So, we have got star id here, so st this id and star, so id is of higher precedence than star. So, we have to pop out uh, entries, so we pop out uh, this id. And uh, so, when we pop out between id and plus, so id uh, is of higher, so as top of the stack is now containing plus, so plus is of lower precedence than id, so it, this popping out uh, operation stops. So, we have got plus here and star here. So, between plus and star, plus is of lower precedence than star, so star is pushed into the stack. Then between star and id, star is of lower precedence than id, so id is pushed into the stack. Now, between id and dollar, so id is of higher precedence than dollar, so, uh, so it will be id is of higher precedence, so I have to pop out some entries. So, id is popped out between uh, now star is on the top between star and id, star is of lower precedence than id. So, popping out operation stops. Now, it is uh, now the top uh, star and dollar, so between star and dollar. So, star is of higher precedence than dollar. So, it will be popping out the star uh, star from the stack. So, star top of the stack contains plus and the symbol popped out is star and plus is of lower precedence than star. So, the popping out stops. So, it, it comes to this configuration between plus and dollar plus is of higher precedence uh, uh, plus is of higher precedence than uh, dollar. So, it will be popping out the plus symbol from the stack. Now, the st top of the stack contains dollar and popped out symbol is plus. So, dollar is uh, less than plus. So, the popping out stops. So, at that po at this point top of the stack contains dollar and the input is also dollar. So, it comes to an uh, accept state and the whole parsing process ends. So, if we, when we come to a situation that the top of the stack contains dollar and the input is also having dollar that means, we have uh, seen the 
complete string. So, it is called it is, it is a shift reduced parsing because sometimes we are shifting the symbol whenever uh, the next uh, next symbol that is coming on the input is uh, uh, whenever the top of the stack is of lower precedence than the next input symbol. So, we are uh, pushing the symbol into the stack and whenever uh, so that is a shift operation and whenever we are uh, getting a situation where top of the stack is of higher precedence than the next input to come. So, so basically conceptually you can view it like this that as if uh, so if this is my stack if this is my stack at some situation so we have got these symbols and there is that uh, less than than greater than relationships so whenever the top of the stack is of lower precedence than id so it has been pushed into the stack so at any point of time if you have this all these symbols so they are of um, so, the, we have got the situation that uh, this top of the stack is of uh, lower precedence than id. So, this id the next symbol that has come. So, this is of higher precedence. So, we have got a situation like this. Okay. So, as if they are all of higher precedence. Then at some point of time if you get a symbol that is going to do it like this. So, whatever comes in between with all these equalities and all. Okay. So, this entire part is going to be one handle. So, this entire part is going to be one handle. So, this portion is popped out, this portion is popped out from the stack and it is uh, so that that is the reduction that we do. So, we, we can output uh, it is explicitly not written that we do a reduction by that. So, essentially it is doing a reduction by that rule and then we can uh, then we can again proceed from this point. So, this way where so we basically try to figure out uh, the situation where we have got uh, in the stack a condition like this and in between we have got all equality things. So, this whole part becomes a, a, a handle and that handle is pruned by uh, doing the reduction by the uh, corresponding grammar rule. 